All right, let's go ahead and start. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about how we run Ironic in production with the thousands of uh, servers. Uh, quick introduction. My name is Mikita Gubenko. I'm a deployment engineer. Here today with me is Sergey Kashaba, principal software engineer, and Alex Saknov, who is a deployment lead. Uh, we are part of uh, professional services department at uh, Mirantis. And our uh, presentation will be based, for the most part, uh, on the customer engagement we have in, with uh, Semantic Cloud Platform Engineering Team. So uh, here's the agenda for today. Uh, first one is uh, why ironic. Uh, so uh, we will discuss um, what provisional tool requirements we had and why ironic was almost a perfect fit. Um, environment, we will discuss what production environment we have and how we deploy things. In uh, customization and missing parts, we will uh, discuss on what um, changes we did to OpenStack code base to, so Ironic will work for us. And the last part is the production challenges. We will talk about bottlenecks, pit, pitfalls to avoid, including, including awesome story when we almost shut down whole data center of thousands of nodes. And uh, some of our colleagues will hear this for the first time. <laughs> All right. So ironic, um, at uh, Semantic we have uh, multiple development teams and they all want to use uh, bare metal differently. So we required some kind of bare metal as a service type of a system uh, and we tried many things. We tried Foreman, Cobbler, Crowbar. Uh, we even, we even uh, developed our own in-house uh, tool. But all the system lacked uh, features and required flexibility. So um, let's uh, discuss what provision tool requirements we had. So it obviously has to be open sourced. Um, since we have uh, multiple hardware vendors in our data centers, we need to support them all. We don't want to depend on a uh, single vendor lock-in. And uh, we also have multiple um, hardware generations in our data center, and we need to support them all. Uh, we constantly get feature requests from our operations guys and internal customers. So we should be able to easily develop drivers, extensions, and plugins without modifying the core components of the system. Full node uh, lifecycle should be supported, so decommissioning and reprovisioning the node should be as easy as building a new one. And this improves environment consistency, manageability, and reliability, and security. Uh, system should be able to uh, schedule resources automatically which means uh, when user requests uh, to build the box, proper bare metal flavor will, will be used, IPs allocated, recant infinity requirement, et cetera. Uh, uh, inventory system is basically the dependency for two previous points. Uh, manual management of assets is very effort intensive and error prone, so we have to have some kind of automated inventory. And it also uh, helps to keep an eye on the uh, current, current state of the environment. Oops. Okay. Uh, so as, as I said, we have multiple development teams, so they should be as isolated, uh, which means we have to have some kind of R yes, thanks. Uh, we have to uh, have some kind of role-based access control uh, to uh, restrict access between uh, tenants, roles, assignments. Uh, this one is easy for automation. You will need the CLI or API, and for user interaction, you it's nice to have. Uh, Comfy UI. And uh, the last but not least, uh, we build our core infrastructure on top of uh, VMs and containers. So uh, these two use cases should be supported also, and we are looking for some kind of unicorn to manage them all. So let's jump to the quick Ironic overview. With all our expertise in OpenStack, uh, we decided that Ironic will be a perfect fit for us. Uh, so Ironic is officially integrated OpenStack project since killer release. It's basically bare metal provisioning as a service we were looking for. It has uh, multiple reference drivers with, which uh, leverage common technologies like Pixie and IPMI to cover a wide range of hardware. Uh, it also supports pluggable driver architecture that allows to develop uh, drivers for other vendors to improve uh, performance and reliability. And, uh, Provisioning process is very similar to virtual machines. For example, Ironic uses uh, image-based deployment, which uh, not only speedifies the provisioning process in comparison with gen general uh, kickstart, proceed approach, 
but also improves uh, provisioning consistency. Uh, here's a quick picture of uh, ironic architecture. So to the generic uh, OpenStack deployment, it adds a RESTful API, which exposes functionality to operator to manage bare metal servers. Uh, ironic conductors, which uh, do uh, bulk of work to provisioning database, database to store the assets and resources, and uh, multiple drivers to uh, support a variety of hardware. So let's discuss uh, the semantic CPE environment. Uh, it's uh, four data centers across the globe. It's hundreds of racks, uh, thousands of bare metal nodes, and we have a variety of hardware and networking vendors and types. And uh, every single node now is managed uh, by Ironic. We are on killer release right now. We are planning to upgrade to Mitaka because some of the issues are already addressed in that release. And uh, was to mention that we also moved already provisioned servers to Ironic system, uh, and we will talk about it in a bit. And uh, this is our deployment architecture, how we deploy things. Basically, uh, each data center is OpenStack region. Uh, we only replicate Keystone database across the data centers um, with the roles and tenants. Uh, users are stored in LDAP, which has also been replicated. Uh, here on the picture, you can see that we have two types of racks, is infrastructure racks and production racks. So infrastructure racks uh, hold the OpenStack computes uh, that were provisioned by the uh, Ironic with this, this OpenStack control plane. And we put uh, VMs on top of it using the same control plane. So it's basically one system to, uh, to rule them all. Uh, so I did a quick introduction on uh, why we chose Ironic. Uh, and how we deploy things. And next, uh, Sergey Kashama will tell about customizations we did to OpenStack code base and uh, missing parts we discovered. Thanks, Nikita. OK. So as a software developer, I'll tell you uh, what changes we, we've done to the OpenStack to fit it actually to our infrastructure. Uh, so OK. Is better? Thanks. A uh, year and a half ago, uh, we had actually in several data centers uh, already provisioned and deployed with different provisioning tools. And uh, we were about to at least double our capacity. So I was asked, uh, Turing wasn't perfect, and I was asked to research if we can use uh, Ironic as the only tool to manage all our bare metals. We already had a couple of requirements from previously provisioned servers. It was to not change uh, networking topology. It was to support uh, naming convention and other. Uh, it appears that there is some gap between the killer release features list and what we needed. So after some discussion, we decided to uh, fill in that uh, gap locally. Um, first modification was uh, because of how networking is designed. Um, so we had several net networks, uh, shared networks, management, for, for instance, data. And uh, each server in data center belongs to that networks. Um, <coughs> but for each rack, there should be a separate R3 subnet uh, in each network. It means that if user asks, OK, I want that bare metal with two networks, a provision framework should pick the server from the pool uh, and uh, find what rack that server belongs to. And for each requested network, pick the IP address from the subnet that assigned to that network. Then we try to map it to Neutron. We created the same set of shared networks. And for each shared network, we created uh, subnets, one per each rack. The tricky part was to teach Nova to pick a proper network when node is provisioned. Uh, we had to modify <coughs> Nova network IPA class. And uh, also, we had to bring some assumptions that kind of subnet names should be similar as a rack name. Also, uh, because we had a lot of subnets for each network, and uh, Neutron, DNS, uh, Mask, 
and drivers send all that networks as part of uh, all that subnets as part of command line. Command line became too long and it didn't work. So we had to patch it a little bit as well. Again, the same workflow. User requests a bare metal and uh, several networks to be on the bare metal after it got provisioned. But networking on a bare metal is different on than VM. So it's usually much less trivial. So you can have just a physical interfaces, you can have bonding, you can have tech interfaces attached to that bond. Uh, on a slide you can see actually the uh, example of uh, one of possible networking topology. Um, by default, Nova can't do it now. Uh, it's uh, in a blueprint, but not yet implemented. So, <coughs> uh, likely, uh, ironic, as part of definition, uh, provides extra dictionary. So, when you define your node, you can put whatever you want to that dictionary. We decided to put the uh, required network configuration to that uh, dictionary. And on Nova side, we put that uh, extra dictionary to Nova config drive. Then we just prepared a set of images for, this diff for different operation systems that uh, contain cloud in it and uh, teach cloud in it to read that uh, networking configuration and apply it. So, done. Uh, Neutron usage and changes. Actually, not much. Uh, the way we use Neutron is uh, defined by the networking design. So we, everything is configured on the switch side, and uh, we use only IPAM and DHCP. IPAM is simple, just allocate IP. And DHCP, for several reasons, we use it only for Pixie boot. We had some issues with the use case when uh, we had uh, relay agent configured on the top of rack switches. Uh, we had to remove logic uh, that uh, Neutron does when it uh, spawns uh, DNS mask process about uh, interface creation and other. And configuration is just don't use uh, name, network namespaces. Uh, nothing should be done with interface driver. Uh, so DHCP should just listen predefined network interface, and that's all. Uh, what? OK. Uh, scattering. <coughs> For scattering, we had three basic requirements. Um, So-called fault zone tolerance distribution which means the way we distribute uh, provisioning for bare metals with the same role. So we have a lot of racks, and we don't want a failure of any racks to uh, destroy some service. So we want uh, bare metal nodes to be distributed over the racks as evenly as possible. Then scheduling by type. So users should be able to say, OK, I want a compute node or storage node, uh, obviously. And finally, we had the requirements that users should be able to say, kind of, hey, scheduler, I want that node to be provisioned in this rack. Or even, on th I want to provision this exact bare metal node. Um, last option was really useful when we migrated to Ironic servers that were already provisioned with, a other, uh, with other provisioning tool. Alex will tell about that uh, later on. So, uh, at first glance, I saw that it's actually not doable. Uh, because of the way Ironic uh, driver for Nova is designed. With uh, Nova, you can have only one Nova compute node that manage all the bare metals. It means that you cannot use availability zones, you cannot use host aggregates, nothing. Uh, but then I found that uh, I can define uh, capabilities as part of bare metal node description. And that capabilities can be used uh, for scattering, which is great. Um, actually, it solved all our uh, requirements. We added to that capabilities rack name and, and uh, server type. So distribution. We just developed our weight function uh, that used to uh, Rec name from capabilities and uh, provided uh, correct weight for any server. 
Uh, then for scavenger by server type, we created several instances, uh, flavors, sorry. And for each flavor, instead of defining memory and disk and RAM, for some reason, we defined uh, flavor metadata, which server type, and turned on uh, compute capabilities filter. It actually matched the flavor metadata to the cap uh, node capabilities, which has solved the use case. And last, REC and server as an instance target, uh, we solved it with a JSON filter. Syntax is not really convenient, uh, but it does what, it, what we needed. Okay, so uh, last two changes are supporting naming convention and local DNS. Naming convention is kind of fing fing fingerprint of a data center. They all are different. Sometimes uh, naming convention expects uh, a physical node location as part of the node name. It means that uh, data center name or rec name or even position of the server inside the rec should be part of name. It means also that uh, final name can be gener generated only after Nova Scheduler uh, dis uh, defines what node should be the target for the scheduling request. By default, we can use instance template name, but it's not enough, so plus one change on Nova side. And final DNS integration. Uh, we had a local DNS, which is essential part of the data center. And it's not always uh, possible to use Neutron uh, DNS service. So we had to, again, one plus one change to Nova uh, to add and remove uh, FQDN records to our local DNS, uh, corporate D DNS, uh, when Nova is provisioned or deprovisioned. So it's actually all the changes we've done. Um, all the changes, uh, they are on a GitHub as a single package. Yes, it's possible. Uh, with Nova, actually with OpenStack, you can replace almost any piece of code without bringing changes to the core, uh, to the core packages. So it's great. Uh, what else? Uh, so I want then Alex is uh, going to tell about uh, real production experience of using Ironic. Alex? Thank you, Sergey. Uh, so let's finally talk about production challenges we had dealing with Ironic. Uh, when, we initially when we initially started um, our POC, we didn't really thought about um, scalability, high availability, and other production type of requirements. We had tons of challenges to even make it work for our use cases and in our environment. Uh, so after a couple of months of POC, we finally did the first deployment in production for newly arrived hardware. And surprisingly, Ironic with our changes was working great and uh, users were happy and excited about using CLI and Horizon that they already know to basically build the boxes. Uh, unfortunately for us, it was the very beginning of our path. Uh, we had a lot of, a lot of old uh, hardware in the same data center that we somehow had to move uh, to Ironic. And the problem was, since this bo most of these boxes were already up and running, um, the transition process had to be seamless, and we cannot afford any reboots and, and downtime. Uh, the very first idea was to inject data about these nodes manually into database, but when we started thinking about this idea uh, in details, uh, it becomes more and more crazy. Basically, uh, you have to update three databases, Ironic, Neutron, and, Gla uh, and Nova. Uh, set proper dependencies between uh, Ironic nodes, instances in Nova, compute nodes, Neutron ports, allocate IPs, and probably do many other things. Chances that we're gonna miss something are probably like 100%. Um, we decided to go another route and uh, use Ironic fake driver. Uh, so we gathered all the information about the nodes through our discovery process and uh, added them to Ironic with the fake driver. Uh, the fake driver does pretty much everything as the normal driver does except uh, the real provisioning. 
and there was uh, one problem with the dri with this driver as well. Uh, when you launch an instance, uh, Nova expect the power status of the hypervisor to be some kind of uh, good status, like power on, on or power off. Uh, since we use the fake driver, Ironic actually don't gather the power status of the physical nodes, and it was reported as a no state. So that was kind of a problem. Uh, we did the temporary fix and basically added uh, the no state to the list of a good state, and that's how we basically were able to launch an no instances on these bare metal nodes. Uh, using the scheduler hints that Sergey described before, we were able to uh, select the exact physical host that we need to build, uh, basically the ones that were already up and running. And obviously through Nova CLI or Nova API, you can specify the exact name you want to use for these boxes and allocate the specific IP. So this part was pretty easy. Uh, the very last step was to change the fake driver to the real driver uh, to make these physical nodes available for users so they will be able to delete them, rebuild them. Um, unfortunately, uh, there is no way to do it through Ironic API if the node is already active. Uh, and the only way that we figured uh, was the manual database update. Uh, it might be not the best way to do like when you deal with production environment, but that was the only way we, f we figured. And uh, again, that was kind of easy and it did work for us. Um, when we added all these nodes to existing capacity in Ironic, we had probably more than thousands of nodes in a single Ironic instance. Uh, moreover, under single Nova Compute Service, needless to say, things were working badly. Uh, simple Nova Compute starts took probably 90 seconds, and uh, it was kind of challengeable to even spin up a single instance. Usually it just timeouted or errored out for any other reason, so it didn't work well. Uh, we started trying to debug what's going on, and we found out that there is a periodic task update available resources that is really slow, and it took probably like all the 90 seconds to complete, and uh, it's blocked Nova Compute Service from any other operations. Um, we kind of tried to optimize this thing and uh, removed some of the steps, like get update uh, migration li li list, since we don't have migra migrations for bare metal nodes. Uh, it kind of helped a little bit, um, and the time reduced probably by twice, but it was still bad for us, and uh, uh, somehow, we have to scale it horizontally. Um, indeed, uh, you can always separate your physical nodes in a data center somehow logically, uh, set up additional ironic control plane with the node compute service and scale it that way. No code change will be required and um, this way probably will work for everyone. Uh, the downside is that you have to manage both control planes. That is additional overhead for your ops team. And um, the end users has, have to either choose the endpoint to use or a region. Uh, and when you deal with the nodes in the same data center, it's probably not really friendly for them. Uh, worth to mention that there is a blueprint of the community to, um, ab about the um, multiple compute hosts capability for Ironic. Uh, unfortunately, it's not implemented yet, and uh, hopefully it's going to be ready in the next few releases. Uh, but it, anyway, it didn't work for us because uh, we need this feature like today. Uh, so we kind of decided to reuse this idea and um, introduce the additional parameter in the configuration file to specify what server type this Nova Compute Service going to manage. Um, also, this server type is specified in the capabilities in the all Ironic nodes. Um, so basically, that's how we scaled the uh, Nova Compute Service in our environment. And as Sergey mentioned, this code and all these features are available at Semantic GitHub. So if anyone has the same problem in your environments, feel free to check it out and maybe reuse it. Uh, the last story for today is going to be the story about how we 
moved Ironic to a different host. Uh, this picture kind of represents uh, the situation we've been while doing it. Uh, when you deal with the tool that uh, operates with the bare metal nodes um, in data center, it's kind of working on a rope without a BLA, and any wrong step can be a real disaster. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, when we did our first deployment in production, uh, we were kind of in rush. The new hardware was already in data center, and um, we didn't really have the chance to do a proper deployment. So we kind of decided to uh, take our lab environment, clone it into production, and uh, just reuse it for this hardware. Uh, a few weeks later, it was the time to move all this setup to a better place um, with automation, monitoring, and uh, I don't know other cool features people usually do in production. Uh, so we uh, provisioned a dedicated server for uh, so-called OpenStack appliance with Ironic and uh, started migrating the services. Uh, Glance, Keystone, Utron, most of the node components migrated without like, any issues. And uh, it was a time to move Ironic with Nova Compute Service, and that's where all the fun parts begins. Uh, 20 seconds after we started Nova Compute Service, we lost SSH connection to this host. Uh, trust me, you never want to have the same feeling we had at this time. Uh, because literally, at this moment, we didn't know whether we lost connection to just the single node, or we just shut down the whole data center. Uh, <laughs> So a few minutes later, we powered on this node, logged in, and checked the logs. Uh, it appears that no compute, no compute just terminated this instance, and Ironic basically shut it down. But why? I'm not going to go through all the details in the database tables relationship, but what actually matters is that uh, when you change the host name, where you run your compute service, uh, you have to do a proper change in your compute nodes and instance tables in Nova database. The, there is kind of dependency between them. And uh, it appears that there is a mechanism in Nova to basically shut down the instance that is, it thinks are not supposed to run there. And that's basically what just happened in our case. Oops, what just happened? Um, anyways, it was the last slide, so I'll just um, continue. Uh, yeah, so as I said before, there is a dependency between the host name and the host field and the compute nodes and instance tables. So if one is changed, like the host name, no, we basically terminate all the instances. Uh, fortunately for us, it happens not just randomly. Uh, Nova filters such instances and uh, sort them by the created date and started from the, like, the newest one. In our case, that's the latest instance was the instance with the OpenStack and the Ironic, and it just deleted itself and not deleted any other box in the production environment. Um, yeah, so. This, this situation can just happen with uh, much worse consequences, not just a couple of gray hairs on our heads. So whenever anyone planning to do such migration, just remember to either preserve the host name or update your tables properly. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all we had for today. Thank you for your time. And if anyone has any questions, I guess, I guess we have like 10 more minutes for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I forgot to say that all the changes that we've done, we made sure there is a blueprint uh, for each change in a community. So it means that part of change, uh, changes that you've done are already implemented by the community in a more general way, of course. And uh, the rest are coming uh, f during maybe next cycle. So, okay. Uh, any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> then thank you for your time.